Hey guys, Omar here. Hope you're doing well. I just watched an awesome video by Taki, Big Head Taco. Uh, Fuji just announced a new camera, the X-E3, and Taki went, he actually had a production model and went through it, showed you the buttons. So I'll link those videos below, check them out. He does a great job. He really loves Fuji. I love watching his videos. So um, I don't have the camera, but as a Fuji X-T20 owner, as you know, I wondered if I was getting into Fuji, or maybe some of you are getting into Fuji, uh, which would you decide to pick up? Uh, so I kind of like some of the stuff that was announced in the E3, and some things that I consider a deal breaker. Cap! <laughs> he's okay, he's okay, it's Cap, he's tough. Now, the first thing that happens when a new camera comes out, we're always like, all right, what does it have? What, it do, what does it not have? And we always seem to focus on the stuff that it doesn't have. Um, but every camera that you look at, if you're trying to purchase a camera, just think about your specific needs because we all kind of have deal breakers. For example, I get a ton of questions of why I went with the X-T20 uh, instead of the X-T2, which is bigger. And I said the reason a thousand times is I was looking for a smaller camera to just grab and take with me everywhere. Think about what your deal breakers are. So the Fuji X-E3 has some cool features, but for me, I would still go with the X-T20 for the following reasons. Reason number one, flippy screen. You already know, those of you that have watched my channel a bunch, I love to just place the Fuji X-T20 on the ground and I like shooting with the flippy flip. The X-E3 doesn't come with the flippy flip. Reason number two. Okay, I don't use it often, but this little, it doesn't even pop anymore. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> the little pop-up flash there. Um, the X-E3 comes with a little flash in the, in the box. If you watch Taki's video, you'll see that he takes it out. Um, but are you really gonna carry that around or have it in your pocket? Um, I guess you can put it in your camera bag, but um, I like the fact that even though I don't ever use this flash, that it's there in a bind and a fixed, as opposed to having to carry a little flash that I probably will never use. If, um, if you really wanna do more flash work with the camera, I mean, just get a dedicated flash and put that in your bag. Um, so that is that one's not really a deal breaker, but I, they should have just throw out that little flash. You don't really need it. Deal breaker number three. Why I wouldn't go with the EX3, although I'll tell you what's good about a camera in a second. I'm not bashing the camera. I like this drive dial. I love the, whoa. I love the drive dial. Um, and if I had an X-T2, the bigger brother of this camera, it has an ISO dial, which I would love if this camera had that. Uh, but I like the physical changing the, draw, the dial. I go from video to, to uh, pretty much single shot. I wish single shot and video were next to each other to just kind of bump between the two instead of far away, but what are you gonna do? The uh, Fuji X-E3 has a uh, menu button that you have to hit to change the drive. So for me, those are kind of the three main reasons why I would go with the Fuji X-T20. The flip up screen is just so fun. I've used it over crowds like this. Uh, and that's super great. Um, so coming from my Canon 5D sort of, you know, these guys don't have flippy screens and I do shoot, I lay down on the ground to shoot portraits. Uh, so it's kind of nice um, to have the little flip screen. Disclaimer, those are just my opinions. If I was choosing between the two, here are some things that would attract me about the uh, X-E3 that look really cool. The first one is, uh, from the comments I've seen on different sites, uh, one deal breaker for you to not get this camera is its looks. Like this bump right here uh, is kind of big. And if you look at the, um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, X-E3, it's got kind of like a nice flat top. I like the flat top. Yeah, don't bug out on me, baby. All right, so that's one reason you might go for the X-E3 is that nice look, the rangefinder look. It's very compact. And I can see, you know, it comes with the kit lens, this big kit lens. And I think that's kind of crazy. You know, it's like perfectly small camera with the big kit lens. Um, they should, the kit lens for that should be maybe this one. And then instead of the 23 F2, which is kind of big on there, they should include one that's a pancake lens. And then you kind of have like the choice of having it be the same size as the X100 series, something you could put in a pocket 
or like a breast pocket and be super cool. That would be one reason I would go for the Fuji X-E3 is that pocketability, pocketability, pocketableness. Okay, so with size and look, I mean, just those of you that shop with emotion, just if you love the look of that camera and the rangefinder and the viewfinder to the side, you know, go with it, man. Don't go with the Fuji X-T20. Maybe you don't use the flip screen that much. Um, so you have, again, these are deal breakers. You, you probably want to pick up both cameras and see how they feel uh, in your hand. The other thing I found inter interesting on the uh, E3 is they got rid of the D-pad. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that because they added like swipey sort of, again, watch Taki's video. He shows you all the stuff, but um, there are like swipeable options. So for example, on my Fuji X-T20, I have, you know, I have film simulation is the D-pad button. Instead, there's like swipiness. Right, Joe? I don't know. <laughs> Where are we going with all this touch? Like, I love this iPod. I love listening music to it. I love switching to the next song. I love changing the volume. I could put it in my pocket. Uh, they don't make this anymore. It's so sad. Now to listen to music, you know, everything is touch, swipe. And even my phone, if I swipe up, uh, it just sometimes, you know, come on, you know, sometimes you swipe and you gotta swipe again because the device doesn't really pick up your finger or sometimes you don't swipe correctly. So it gets annoying, like a tactile button to me, you know, especially as a pro photographer, if I need to, to change something quickly, the touch to chance, I don't know. Um, I guess in this line of camera, in the sort of consumer and below pro, I guess it's fine and it's where we're going. Everything is touch, touch screen. So am I against touch screen? Absolutely not. Oh, one thing I do love they put on there, they put a joystick button. If the X-T20 had a joystick button, dang, that would be super cool. Uh, it doesn't have a joystick button. And as far as touch screen goes and touch, uh, it's great, but I still find that I don't use the touchscreen for focus. Uh, I almost forget that it's there. I actually use, you know, I go down to, to pick my uh, focus points, and then I find that I'm switching them. I'm going across with the, 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 the D-pad. So maybe I'll start practicing more with the touch, but I ain't using the touch that much, you know what I'm saying? So they removed the D-pad, which I think is kind of smart. Here's why. The D-pad, although I use it and love it, um, those of you that have watched my videos in the past, you know that I sometimes I set my D-pad to be specific things and from holding the camera, it switches <laughs> the things I set the D-pad to be. So getting rid of that D-pad and letting you put your whole thumb palm area on there is probably nice to shoot around with. Uh, so that's something, look, already, you see? Uh, I, I put my thumb on there and it switched the white balance on. And in my New Orleans video, that was something that was happening early on when I first started using the camera, um, that the white balance would be totally skewed to the right, the custom white balance because of that. Okay, so it was going to the right twice and then it would move that over there and you would get some crazy red. <laughs> I'm like, wow, my picture's red. So guys, bottom line, there is no perfect camera. You just have to decide what's the best for you. Uh, do I wish my camera was weather sealed? Absolutely yes, because I got caught in the rain yesterday. Mm. It was totally fine. I ran in and wiped it on my shirt and uh, wiped it with a towel. To totally good, totally good. If you don't need the flip screen and you like that it's you're able to put it in your pocket with a small lens uh, or that it has the viewfinder, rangefinder style, um, style to the side and you don't care that the D-pad is gone, man, this has the same sensor as this guy. Uh, the X-Pro2, the X-T2. So you're gonna take fantastic, gorgeous pictures. You're gonna have to, and I'm gonna have to go see the camera um, and see what it feels like in my hand. Those of you getting into Fuji for the first time, you got a lot of choices. You got a lot of choices and you have to decide which one fits best. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on the Fuji E3. Check out the videos, I'll link them all below of everyone who kind of has the camera. Uh, Fuji released some awesome videos of people using the camera. It looks fun, it looks great. And uh, maybe I'll try it sometime and let you guys know what I think. All right, I'll see you next time, guys. Keep shooting, though. Stop looking at videos. No!